Hello and welcome to worship today. I'm say happy 4th of July to all of you who are watching in America. Of course, we have a few people who watch us from other countries. If you are not from America, it is our Independence Day on the 4th of July. And it's something we as Americans really love to celebrate. One of the reasons we, way we do is we wear red, white, and blue, which is kind of what you're seeing on my shirt and things today. But we have lots of wonderful summer traditions on the 4th of July here, and it's lots, it's a really fun time. So for those of you who are with us in America, we wish you a happy and safe 4th of July, and we're really glad that you took the time in your day of independence to worship with us. A few things. Um, if you're looking for local announcements, please make sure you stay on till the end of the service and we'll have a time for local announcements for the Summit congregation and maybe even a couple for the Florence congregation as we uh, keep going. But if you are uh, not from our local congregation, we definitely want you to worship with us anyway. And if you are watching us and worshiping with us, we have two things we'd like you to do. One, you can either give us an emoji, which is like the like or the heart button or any of those things, or you can let us know what you're doing on this 4th of July the, uh, along with the worship. We'd love to hear the, that from you. And you can also, number two, share the worship. What does that do? If you share the, what you're watching today, which is our worship service, then it allows it to stay on the Facebook feed a little bit longer and it lets people who are looking for it throughout the week, people who might be camping or not somewhere where they have the internet and be able to watch it, to watch and worship with us. And you can't do that if you can't find it. It's one of those things. Um, and you know, it is also a great way for you to be an evangelist, to be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ with those on the internet and all of the people who are connected to you on Facebook or YouTube or wherever you're watching this from. And so please take the time to give us an emoji or a comment and to share the worship. Now let's begin by worshiping our God. Our song is Trading My Sorrows. come together to worship. We take the time to confess our sins to our God and to receive his forgiveness. So please join me. O merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done 
and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, our Savior Jesus Christ died for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore can declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue on then with our prayer of the day. If you happen to have the white celebrate inserts, the prayers are written on them. God of the covenant, in our baptism, you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us courage you gave the apostles that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, now I have our readings of our lessons. Our first reading comes from the book of Ezekiel, the second chapter. A voice said to me, O oh mortal, stand on your feet and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered me and sent me on my feet. And I heard him speaking and he said to me, mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn and I am sending you to them. And you shall say to them, thus says the Lord, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Our Psalm is a Psalm 123. To you, I lift up my eyes to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of the servant look to the hands of their masters and the eyes of the maid to the hands of their mistress, so our eyes look to you, O Lord our God, until you show us your mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have more than enough contempt. Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich and of the derision of the proud. Now, the second lesson is from the book of 2 Corinthians. But again, I'm not preaching on that this week. So if you'd like to look it up, it's 2 Corinthians 12, 2 through 10. But instead, we are going on to the gospel. So Holy, Holy Gospel today is from Mark 6, Mark the 6th chapter, verses 1 through 13. So Jesus came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, they began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. And they said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary? And are not his brothers James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, and his sisters here with us? And they took offense with him. And then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not with honor, out honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except he laid his hands on some sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went out among the villages teaching and he called the 12 and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. And he ordered them to take nothing of their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and put on, not, on, not put on two tunics. And he said to them, wherever you enter the house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, 
as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. And they cast out demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may notice we're sitting in a kind of an odd angle today. And the reason we're doing that is for part of our children's sermon that I'd like to show you about. So I'm going to stand up and I'm going to turn the camera just a little bit so you can see something that is over here on my wall. Can you all see this? It's a big uh, tree with a lot of pictures on it here on my wall all up there. And all of those pictures are of family people, people I consider family. We call it our family tree as a joke. Now, families are important, right? Our family, one of the big things I have right in the middle are pictures of the grandparents that kind of started the family, my mom and dad and my husband's mom and dad. And from the, those pictures that are right at the beginning, the whole family came. Some of them just from birth because they're um, brothers and sisters or uncles and aunts. Some of them because they married into the family. But the thing that makes them family is the fact, fact that we love them and they love us and we consider them family. There are some people on this that are not related to us in any way by blood, but they are our family. And so we put them on there. Well, in our gospel lesson for today, we have some people who are trying to say that Jesus shouldn't be a big deal because of his family. They try to say that his mother wasn't important and what he did wasn't important and the people he loves are not important. And because his earthly family wasn't important, then Jesus shouldn't have been important or be able to be the son of God, the Messiah either. Well, we know that they are wrong, right? <laughs> wrong, right? That sounds funny. We know that that's not true. Just like we know sometimes family can be people who we love, who aren't related by blood at all, people who are adopted into families or people who are just ones we've gotten to know and gotten to love. And so we know what makes Jesus our family and makes you part of God's family is not who you're related to by blood, but who you believe in and who you love. You love Jesus and Jesus loves you. So therefore you get to be part of Jesus' family. And that's all that matters. So let's remember that today. We're all part of the family of God. Amen. Okay, so let's say a prayer before we say our sermon. Loving God, on this day of the 4th of July and our remembrance of independence, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, last weekend, Michael, my husband and I, we were going between two churches, the, between the Summit Church and the Florence Church, who were just starting to go and get to know those people over in Florence. And we uh, listened to the radio, and on the radio we heard a news story. And the news story was from Albuquerque, I believe it was, where there had been a big balloon, a uh, hot air balloon, gone into the sky with people on it, and it had something gone wrong, and it had crashed to the ground. And listening to that story, this, and which is a very sad, terrible story, made me think, excuse me, made me think of a story that I have heard and told many times throughout time about another trip on a hot air balloon. Now, I think I might have even told this last year online, if you've been listening, but as my seminary professor always tells me, a good story is worth telling more than once. So here goes. Well, the story starts out with one of uh, my authors I really like. His name is John Ortberg, and his wife, Nancy. Well, his wife, Nancy, was having a really 
one of those really important birthdays. And so he decided he was going to do something special for her. And he thought and thought and thought until he decided, you know what? We're gonna go on a hot air balloon ride on her birthday. That'll check off some of our, you know, some of the bucket lists that you want and we'll just really enjoy it. And so he paid the money, got it all ready. And he thought he had made a really good idea right until the day that he got her out to the place to start going up in the hot air balloon. Then he remembered that eh, the hot air balloon was actually on his bucket list. And his wife reminded him that not only was it not a dream of hers to go up in a hot air balloon, she didn't particularly like heights. But after she found out that he had paid down money and he had really tried hard to do something nice for her. She decided, let's go, we'll make the best of it. We'll try very hard to enjoy it. So they got out and they met this other couple. This upper cup, other couple talked to him a little bit, but were pretty standoffish, especially after they found out that John um, was a pastor and a writer and things like that. They just weren't very excited about him. And so they kind of kept to themselves, which didn't add at all to the fun of the trip. But it didn't matter. They decided they were still gonna have fun. So they all got into the basket with this balloon captain, whatever you call the guy who runs the balloon. Anyway, they got in and they went up higher and higher and higher and higher. And while John was just looking out and enjoying the grandeur and the wonder of this trip, he looked over at his wife and she was not. Nancy had her arms around some of those ropes and she was most of the time had her eyes closed or was looking just down right there. She wasn't looking out and she didn't care how wonderful all the countryside looked. She just didn't like being this high up in the air. So hoping to make her feel a little bit better, John turns to the captain of their balloon and he starts talking to him and he asks him, so did you always want to be a person who captain balloons or, you know, how did you get to be that? Hoping that he would tell him some wonderful inspirational story that would make Nancy feel better. But instead, the man started in. Well, dude, it took about two words for John to realize that he had made a mistake in talking to this young man, but he couldn't stop him. So the man kept on. Well, dude, it goes like this. I was out playing and I broke my leg in a skateboard accident and it got laid up for many months. And as I was laying there laid up, I looked out and I looked up and saw these hot air balloons going across and I thought, dude, I could do that. And so here I am. Well, Nancy turned her eyes towards her husband and gave him one of those looks. <laughs> and he could see the people on the other side of the balloon were not incredibly inspired by this uh, story either. And so he decided to, you know, just try to keep things to himself and just hold on till it was done. Well, a few minutes later, the watch on the man's wrist beeped and he looked at them and he said, uh, dude, there's a storm coming. So we have to go down to which almost everyone else breathed a sigh of relief. But then he said, and you better hold on pretty tight dudes because I've never piloted this specific one before and it's kind of gonna be a bumpy ride. <sighs> kind of gonna be a bumpy ride. John Ortberg wrote that that did not describe what the ride down was like at all. It was bumpy. It was terrible. His wife was about ready to curse out his own uh, name and everybody was yelling. And at one point, 
when it looked as if they were going to tip over and fall out of the baskets, the standoff couple and the other side of the basket rushed over to him and grabbed him and said, you're a pastor, do something religious, save us. John Ortberg said it was all he could do not to turn to him and take an offering because you know, people think that's the kind of things that religious people do. Well, you're the pastor. Do something religious. You're the person who's supposed to be holy. Do something religious. Could have been the things that those who had Jesus in front of them in his hometown were saying or at least thinking. See, Jesus is fairly early in his ministry. He has gone and gotten well known for healing people and doing miracles. He hasn't had all of his 12 called yet. And you know, he's, he's early on, but he's showing that he has great power. And he comes to his hometown where a lot of his family are living, obviously. We kind of think maybe Joseph is gone by then, but we're not sure. But when he comes to this hometown, these people who have been hearing all these things about him, look at him and they say, well, if you're so great, do something religious. What's something religious that Jesus should do? We're not quite sure. And when he seems hesitant, they start talking to each other and they start saying, well, we know who he is. He's just a carpenter. Well, in our world, being a carpenter gives you a fairly good middle class, um, you know, living, you're an artisan, most of carpenters are. Right now, if you want to hire a carpenter, you'd have to get in line and probably be a year or two behind because there's not that many carpenters and they do a very good job. But that wasn't what they were referring to in Jesus' time. In Jesus' time, a carpenter was a person who worked with their hands. And if you were a person who got your hands dirty in work, you were low class. And so they're trying to put him in his place. Isn't he just a carpenter? Aren't his brothers and sisters over here? You mean to tell me he thinks he's holy when he was born into that family? And then they give him an insult that's even worse. They say, isn't he Mary's son? Now we don't think of that as an insult in our lives. If somebody says to me, aren't you Carol's daughter? I would say, well, yeah, I sure am. But in Jesus' day, you were never referred to as your mother's son, unless people were trying to say that there wasn't a father, at least not a legitimate father. And so the people are trying to say that Jesus was born on the wrong side of the sheets or uh, whatever you want to say, but that he was an illegitimate child and that only Mary was there. That's a really, really big insult in Jesus' time, by the way. Nowadays, it isn't something we quite understand how big of an insult it is. See, they couldn't quite take the fact that something that could seem familiar to them, someone that they thought they knew, could be holy, could be the son of God as we now know and call him. Well, their disbelief, it says, made it so Jesus didn't do any big things, big miracles, big acts. You know, they were kind of worried, hoping that Jesus would bring down the wrath of God and overthrow the Romans or do something like that. But it says, I think it's always interesting how it says, all Jesus did was touch a few sick people and heal them. Well, if you know Jesus, if you know the way his ministry went, if you know what he stood for, you would know that touching sick people and healing them is exactly what Jesus would say was doing something religious. Jesus came to a people who thought that God could only be reached 
in a temple by the right people doing the right things. And he came to this earth and reached all of the wrong people on the outskirts. And he said, I want you to. And that didn't sit well with the people who were on the inside. Well, people of God, we belong in a world where most of the time the church gets kind of a bad rap where people look at you and say oh yeah they're so religious and that's usually not a compliment where people who aren't from the church expect that the church is actually all about those candles that are lit and and the things that are chanted and all of the religious squares that we have to fill ourselves in. And they think that's all that there really is to it. They don't really get the truth about what it is to be a follower of Jesus Christ. That a true act of our religion is to go outside the doors of the church and to reach into the communities to those who are hurting, to those are in need, to those who have no home or any place. Doing those acts, those, Jesus would say, are acts of being religious. So how do we try to convince people around us what the true gospel of Jesus Christ says and does? Well, the best thing that we can do as followers is to do exactly as Jesus commanded. To not find ourselves too stuffed up in our Sunday best, too stuck up in, in all of the things that we love about being traditionally Lutherans or whatever denomination you are, and to be, continue to reach out to those who need us the most. And not that only, to welcome in those who need us the most too. Jesus would tell us that that's the best way to be religious. Jesus Christ came into this world. He taught us what it was to be his followers. He was very, very clear and then he went to the cross for all of us who have a hard time doing the commands that he gave us. He suffered, he died, he rose again. And he lives on in you and me and all those who believe in Jesus Christ. And so folks, this week, it's time to do something religious. In Jesus' name, amen. Our song is Messiah. Someone shouting from the desert, someone shouting from the sea, someone shouting from the mountains, someone shouting
the peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Today, knowing the power of Jesus Christ, we pass it on to you no matter where you are and when you are listening. Knowing that God's power is not kept within any bounds, not even the bounds of place to place by electronic message here. God can and does go where his followers are. So peace be with you this day. We also want to remind you today and every Sunday that we are called to be stewards of God. So whether or not you belong to a church or to a congregation of Hope Lutheran as I do, we ask you to remember that all you have and all you are are gifts from your God and your God asks you to give your first fruits back as thanks. If you would like to give some offering to Hope Lutheran Church, you may do so by sending it to P.O. Box 886 in Summit, South Dakota, 57266. You may also do so by looking us up on Venmo and doing an online payment that way. Or if you're interested in being a person who does automatic withdrawals, you may do that by contacting us and I'll put you in touch with our treasurer who can do it very easily. Whatever you choose to do, whether it is with us or with a congregation that you belong to, we ask that you remember that everything we give is a blessed gift from our God and that we return to him with thanks and praise. Amen. We continue then on with our prayers for the people of God. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of all through the waters of baptism, you claim the people of all races, ethnicities, languages, and as your beloved children. Sustain the baptized and increase their faith that your gospels may be proclaimed throughout the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the heavens, you created us, spirit, animates, uh, excuse me, you're creating spirit, animates the universe. We give you thanks for the moon and stars, for the planets and the Milky Way galaxies, and for all the mysteries of the cosmos that remain unknown to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of freedom, you have liberated us from sin and death and rescue us from all forms of spiritual, social, and political oppression. Defend us from tyrants in our midst and deliver us from all forms of slavery and corruption. Direct our freedom for works of liberation and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you welcome the vulnerable. You become vulnerable in the person of Jesus Christ in solidarity with the disempowered. Strengthen those who feel faint, give courage to those who fear, and bring wholeness to those in need. We especially lift up to you today, Marcia and Brenda, Kelly, Butch, and Joe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of holiness, you sent us out into the world to proclaim your love. We pray for our outreach ministries and equip us as we leave this place to witness and serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our farmers, asking for rain to come where it is needed 
and for the help throughout all this time of heat. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are traveling during this 4th of July time and ask that you help to keep them safe. Ask that you help us all to remember also as we celebrate that the world is very dry right now and not to have fires claim everything. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks that in every place and time you call forth prophets who move us towards freedom. Thank you for those who work for human rights, community organizers, and all who strive for liberty for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord God, for our country, for all who fight for it and for our own safety, and ask you to help us as children of the promise and as blessed members of the United States to reach out, to be your hands and your feet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we'll have a moment for our local announcements. Local announcements. We will not be having in-house worship at Hope Lutheran on July 4th. Instead, you are invited out to Nisadak Bible Camp, which is on Lake Enemy Swim. Worship there will be at 11 o'clock and Pastor Janet will be preaching. Pastor Janet will be taking vacation from July 5th through July 8th. This means there will be no Wednesday night off or Wednesday night worships or any Wednesday office days that week. We will have a special congregational meeting on July 25th from nine o'clock at nine o'clock. And this special meeting will be about the possibility of sharing ministry pastor with Florence and about our constitution renewal. On this day, when we celebrate our independence, may we remember our God of grace, our God of glory, and may our God bless us and keep us and travel with us this weekend. May he look upon us with favor and give us his peace. Amen. We'll now have our final song. Our song is Light of the World. You are the light of the world. You are the
as we remind you every week. Go your way and be safe, be smart, and be kind to each other. For we live in a world that needs so much kindness. Go in peace and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, again, have a safe and healthy celebration of the 4th of July Independence Day. And we will see you again next week. We love you. Bye.